Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Hebrew ebook before it's gone. Mudag. Upset. Mudag. Upset. Haish mudag shechen notralo avoda raba. The man is upset as he has a lot of work remaining. Yeah, that's upsetting. Lachiv. To hurt. Lachiv. To hurt. Anashim tovim mishtadlim shelo lachiv lacherim. Good people try not to hurt others. You know, you should always be considerate towards other people and try to put yourselves in their shoes because, you know, we're human beings. <laughs> Boded, lonely. Boded, lonely. Haisha bodeda. The woman is lonely. I don't know, this sentence kind of reminds me of when I was studying English when I was like nine. So my teacher taught me through Beatles songs and then she taught me Eleanor Rigby for some reason, and I started crying like in the middle of the lesson, you know, I was I'm like, Ugh, ugly crying, but I was like weeping because the song is so sad and it's about lonely people. And I don't know, I just, it hit me right in the feels. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was a sensitive kid. Atsuv, sad. Atsuv, sad. Ze atsuv liot levad b'shabat. It's sad to be alone on Saturdays. I think especially like for Jewish people and like in Israel maybe, if you're alone on a Saturday and Saturday is like Shabbat and some people do Kiddush and stuff like that and then when you're alone it could be sadder but I don't think it's, for me I don't think it's sadder than any other day. It kind of depends on the context, you know? Koder, gloomy. Koder. Gloomy. Mezeg ha'avir ayom nir'e koder. The weather seems gloomy today. I have a British friend and like when the weather is bad she always says, Oh, that's grim. So, <laughs> koder can also mean grim. Oh, that's grim. Livkot. To cry. Livkot. To cry. Hu boche kol hazman. He cries all the time. You know how some babies are like that? Oh my gosh. Miyuash. Discouraged. Miyuash. Discouraged. Shum davar lo lech li ayom. Ani miyuash. Nothing works for me today. I'm discouraged. So yeah, the word miyuash can be discouraged, but it can also be something a little bit more dramatic, like despair or <laughs> something like that. But Day-to-day -day conversations, usually it's just like discouraged and not total despair. Meuchzav, <laughs> disappointed. Meuchzav, disappointed. Ani meuchzav, kibalti tziyun garua bamivchan. I'm disappointed. I got a bad grade in the exam. Meduchdach, unhappy. Meduchdach, unhappy. אחרי שאני צופה בסרט עצוב, אני מרגיש מדוכדך. After I watch a sad film, I feel unhappy. So the word מדוכדך is not only unhappy, but it can also be something that's more like, you know, gloomy or grim. doesn't have to have a reason, like you're just feeling gloomy, you're just feeling a little bit melancholic. חרד, anxious. חרד, anxious. תוצאות הבחינה מגיעות מחר, ואני מאוד חרד לגביהן. The exam results are coming out tomorrow, and I'm really anxious about it. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין. I couldn't agree with you more. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין. I couldn't agree with you more. Yes, so like when you really want to emphasize your opinion is the same as somebody else's and like you feel very strongly and passionately about it, like, I couldn't agree more. I agree with you completely, totally, 100%. Of course. Of course. Of course. Um, so if somebody asks you something or he 
wants to hear your agreement about something, you'll say, oh, yes, yes, you're absolutely right, of course, כמובן. אני מניח, I guess so. Mm, אני מניח, I guess so. So, the literal tra- translation of, like, the verb להניח, אני מניח, um, it's like, it's assume. So, it's kind of like saying, instead of I guess so, it's like, I assume so. That's the literal translation. בדיוק התכוונתי להגיד את זה. I was just going to say that. בדיוק התכוונתי להגיד את זה. I was just going to say that. It's like you took the words out of, out of my mouth. You know, I was just going to say that. We're thinking the same thing, you know, great minds. <laughs> כן, אתה צודק. Yes, you're right. כן, אתה צודק. Yes, you're right. This is often like if somebody gives you an advice and you know that the advice is solid. So it's like, yeah, you know, you're right. Sometimes advice, advices are hard to follow. So sometimes you will, see, you will say it like, yeah, I, I know, you're right. And sometimes like, yeah, I know, you know? אתה טועה. You're wrong. אתה טועה. You're wrong. So this is like very abrupt and kind of a harsh way to tell somebody that he's wrong. Um, but I would say that's probably the most common, commonly used, at least in Israel. People are quite, um, you know, they're out there and they speak their minds. And if they don't agree with you, they'll just tell you straight to the face, you know, like, you're wrong. לא נראה לי. I don't think so. לא נראה לי. I don't think so. So it's like, if you're maybe 90% sure about something that it's not, or you just, people, some, somebody asks you something and you don't, like, you don't feel it, you just say, I don't think so. לא נראה לי. Which literally translates to, I don't see so. אולי. Maybe. אולי. Maybe. This was like one of my favorite words when I was a little kid. Like people would ask me things and I would just say, אולי. <laughs> uh, which just literally is maybe. אני לא מסכים. לא. I don't agree. No. אני לא מסכים. לא. I don't agree. No. So when you say אני לא מסכים in Hebrew, it can either mean I don't agree or I won't allow it. Um, it depends to who you're talking to. Like I would maybe say it to my dog and I'll tell him אני לא מסכימה and then he'll just stop doing what he's doing. Um, but if you're not agreeing with somebody's opinion, you can also say אני לא מסכים. Mm-mm, לא. אני מסכים. I agree. אני מסכים. I agree. I don't know, I seem to use that much less than don't agree. Maybe, maybe it's just me. מה שלומך? How are you? מה שלומך? How are you? So yeah, like this is the most common way to ask people in Hebrew how they are. You can also say like, hey, what's up? Or, you know, how's it going? But the most simple way is, מה שלומך? ואתה? And you? So after you've been asked how are you and you've given your response, you would ask the other person, and you? ואתה? אני בסדר. I'm fine. אני בסדר. I'm fine. Yeah, just, בסדר is literally just fine. It can be, you know, fine. It can be fine. שלומי לא רע. I'm not bad. שלומי לא רע. I'm not bad. So I think people usually would say that after they, maybe they had a bit of a rough time, I don't know, like maybe at work or something personal, and then when people ask them how they're doing, so they would say, oh, I'm not bad, like, you know, it's getting better. גם שלומי טוב. I'm fine too. גם שלומי טוב. 
I'm fine too. When you say gum in the beginning of the sentence, it's the same as saying in English too, but in the end of the sentence. So in Hebrew, you would say it first. Gam shlomitov. Ani ashnuni. I'm sleepy. Ani ashnuni. I'm sleepy. I think nowadays it's like a very common thing to say, like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm sleepy. When do you guys actually like wake up? I only wake up after I have a cup of coffee and then maybe another hour. Ani margish ra. I'm feeling bad. Ani margish ra. I'm feeling bad. So if you're ill, usually yes, ill or having a headache, you would say that you feel bad. It's not so much as like an emotional thing, you know, I'm hurting, I'm sad. It's like, I feel bad, I'm, I'm ill. Shlomi Metsuyan. I'm great. Shlomi Metsuyan. I'm great. When you're really doing well, like you're really happy, it's like, I'm great, Metsuyan. How have you been? How have you been? So since in Hebrew we don't have as much tenses as English, and we don't have like all of the progressive tenses, it's just past, past um, present and future. Um, when we try to ask like, oh, how have you been during the last few days? How have you been during the last few weeks? So we would say, how are things going for you? Pretty much that's the literal translation. Manishma, what's up? Manishma, what's up? Um, so this is like the number one most common expression um, in Israel when you ask people how they're doing and it's very friendly and casual. Like when you say manishma, it's just like saying what's up. And the literal translation, it's like saying what is heard? Like, what do you have to tell me that is new? Please do. Please tell me. Um, so that's it. That's manishma. Could I get a map? Could I get a map? Obviously, you can hear the closeness between the word map and mapa. And I think probably the origin is like Greek or something like that. And it just you know, found its way into all the different languages. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Well, obviously, if somebody speaks English, he can answer you that question even if you ask it in English. <laughs> Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Yeah, that's always very useful. I suggest you ask this question like at the information center inside the airport and not just go outside and start asking people because most people have their own arrangements of getting to their own places and, you know, just talk to people who know stuff, you know? Yes, internet al bechinam? Is there free Wi Fi? Yes, internet al bechinam? Is there free Wi-Fi? Now this is a question that I can relate to. If you want to ask like what's the Wi-Fi password in Israel, then you should ask Mahasisma la Wi-Fi. If you say Wi-Fi, people know what that is. Um, so just ask Mahasisma. Yesh lachem chadarim pnuim alayla? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Yesh lachem chadarim pnuim alayla? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Girl, if you didn't pre-order your rooms in advance, like, I don't know, I don't, I can't even, I don't know what to tell you. Okay? Just, whatevs. Could I move to a different room? Could I move to a different room? I don't normally do this unless the room is really bad or it smells. That happened to me before, like when the room just smells out of out of nowhere. Hizmanti <laughs> makom. I have a reservation. Hizmanti makom. I have a reservation. So this one you can use in both restaurants or hotels or, you know, whenever you make a reservation to. Sometimes it could even be a bus. So that's really useful. Ifshale kabel tafrit bevakasha? 
Could we have the menu, please? אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu, please? Yeah, sometimes they just forget, like they sit, they sit you down, you're at the table, sometimes they'll even give you water and no menu, so that's kind of funny. יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? So, I think, like, in Israel, generally, if you ask the waiter if he has recommendations, then he will tell you what he personally likes. Um, whereas in other places, they would like, oh, do you have recommendations? And they'll tell you, yeah, this and this is very popular. So, I don't know what you guys prefer, but I kind of prefer the waiter's own preference because he probably ate all of the dishes in the menu and he knows what up, you know. אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? Yeah, or you can just like... And I think that's like an international thing, you know, check please, but you'll be surprised some countries. <laughs> okay, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching Hebrew Top Words. We spoke about 20 travel phrases that you should know. Please let me know down below if there's anything else that you want to know. And what do you commonly use? And if you have a funny story for when you were abroad, I'd love to read all of your comments. Don't forget to like up this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more content, more videos, and more Hebrew. I'll see you next time. Bye. Shalom.